great. <clears throat> Oops. <clears throat> I don't know if I sound weird. I might be... My allergies might be kicking in, so I don't know. Um, yay! We're back! And I'd completely actually forgotten that we were playing Wilbur. Um, because, you know, brain. Um, but we're back as Wilbur, and we're at the inn in the lower city, and we are going to talk to Remy, but I sort of want to do everything else first, just because this is what we have to do to, you know, story progression. Um... Master Marcus and Bill eventually had enough of this strange role-playing apparatus. I thought Master Marcus had outgrown his love of fantasy worlds, but now there's a live role-play. I'm worried about him. Eventually, he might spend all of his time in his fantasy role-play world of bicycles, tax returns, microwaves and branded soft drinks, and forget the real world entirely. <laughs> Hopefully, I can sleep in my own bed tonight. A bed here at the inn would overtax the contents of my wallet. <laughs> yeah, especially since his, he is <clears throat> paid in apples. So you see the same the thing? thing makes a good fireplace, and the boar's head from the old inn looks good there too. Oh, I yeah. must say that overall, I really like this pub. I hope that in a few days I can celebrate the election victory here with Remy and the Archmage. Huh. Now that he mentions it, I kind of do remember the boar head from the first game. Alright, look over here. So yeah, there were like two headmaster blocks because he left the office and then he like left the office again. That was weird. So hello. Headmaster block seems to be counting gold. Lots of gold. I wonder where he got it. Hello, headmaster block. Weathervane, haven't you got things to attend to at school? Nah. I'm sort of still on the job. I'm I'm just getting some tools from the town. Fine. I have to admit that your performance today did not disappoint me. I thank you. Really? I didn't expect anything. Thus, I was neither surprised nor disappointed that your results do not look good when compared to those of a qualified specialist. Oh, thanks, dude. What are you doing there, if I might ask? Surely you can't earn that much gold as a school headmaster, right? Of course not. The gold is for the council leader's election campaign. I'm her party treasurer. Some people want the council leader to win the election very badly. Of course. They see their donation as an investment in the future, and they know how to make a difference. I think that you're unfairly giving me difficult tasks just so I can fail at them, and then you have an excuse to get rid of me. Oh, I could get rid of you with very simple tasks, Weathervane. It's not your fault. You shouldn't have been put in a position in which you are confronted with tasks that are beyond your schooling and your abilities. Uh-huh. Have to be going. I'll be expecting you tomorrow after the opening ceremony for a staff appraisal meeting. So we can uh -huh. talk about your performance. Uh -huh. Very well. My golem and I are gonna show you. Yeah, we're gonna show him. Ooh, what, what are these things? Postcard. Swinging Sea Stone, the town that never sleeps. This postcard was clearly sent before the war. Even the mage school tower is in its proper place. Ooh. Okay, apparently I'm... Oh, hello. Uh... I can click on things? Wait, what? What's happening? Is this a map? Wait, what? What? Oh my god, it's a magical map. What the crap? Never had this in this game before. What? Hmm. A sheet of paper with lots of paragraphs in small type. It says license in law at the top. Rules for different drinking games, maybe. Article 1, paragraph 1. Drink with sense. If sense is not available, drink without. Hmm. And here, Article 6, paragraph 5. The feeding of mugwise after midnight is expressly forbidden. That makes sense. 
Article 14, paragraph 2, the host is not required to serve vampires. This seems to be a long list of rules that apply to inns and their guests. How practical. This way you can check at any time to ensure that any freewheeling parties still conform to local ordinances. That's one less worry. There are a whole bunch of articles here. The paper is covered in writing so small and closely packed that it's difficult enough to decipher the text sober. Article 9, paragraph 1. Dwarven ale may only be served in specially secure underground bunkers. <laughs> Luckily, they don't know about the cellar master back home in the White Ridge Mountains and our dwarven ale experiment. <laughs> there are a whole bunch of articles here. The p Article 9, paragraph... <laughs> yeah, so dwarven ale uh, is, is, um, is a powerful explosive. Like, I mean, dw the dwarves drink it, but it's, it's, a, it's a powerful explosive. <laughs> oh yeah, this was someone's jacket. The jacket belongs to a protester. It has several patches and a badge pinned on the front. No one noticed. Ooh, we have some kind of protester badge. Cool. Alright, let's finally talk to Remy. Hello, Remy. If it isn't the magic school's new star professor. How was your first day, Wilbur? Um... Headmaster Block is very mean to me. He gives me loads of difficult tasks. All of which you've solved, knowing you. Yes, but then he gives me new tasks that are even more difficult. And even if I work through the night, I still couldn't finish them all. No one could. Interesting and curious. If he wanted to represent you as the Archmage's bad choice, then he wouldn't have given you exercises that are clearly impossible. People would realize what kind of game was being played, and the trick would backfire. Did you notice anything else? Yes. I surprised Headmaster Block in the staff room as he was rummaging through a desk drawer. But he was startled when I spoke to him, like I caught him doing something. He didn't want you to see him fiddling around in his own desk drawer. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Uh, first, there was the unsolvable exercises, and now the desk drawer. Something's not right. That's what I think, too. Maybe there's an imposter, like, playing him or whatever. The council leader was standing up by the new lottery drum, dictating tomorrow's edition of the lookout to a reporter. Yes, she has the lookout under her thumb. She's a horrible piece of work. Ambitious, stubborn, and unscrupulous. A dangerous combination. Comes from a humble background, but got her feet on the old Van Buren's table. Tried to persuade him to do all sorts of new business deals and start a career in politics. Many say he died so young because he finally wanted to be left in peace. How did she end up as the Archmage's most promising challenger? The Archmage doesn't want the most important posts in government to go automatically to the richest citizens anymore, but rather to the most competent people, chosen by the people. And of course the nobility and the merchants don't like that one bit. They were seething when they found out about it, but there was nothing they could do to start with. The Archmage was too popular, untouchable. But then along came Sibyl Van Buren, and she had a plan. The election was to be approved and set for one year's time. One year in which she put up obstacles in the Archmage's way and sabotaged his politics in any way she could. Her only aim was to make him look bad. By the gods, how I'd load it if she succeeded. So what do we do now? Keep an eye on Headmaster Block and see what happens? Show near the elections. A supporter of the council leader behaving suspiciously in the vicinity of the Archmage. No, too risky. We can't wait. So you're going to have a look for yourself? Poof, I'd like to, but perhaps that's precisely their plan. An officially unofficial employee of the Archmage sniffing about in the office of one of his political opponents. Wouldn't be good if word got out. A first-rate scandal. But what about a teacher looking for a form in the staff room? A teacher who is in the school because the headmaster has given him tasks to be done. <laughs> Normally I would try to discourage you. But the Archmage is visiting the school tomorrow. If his opponents are planning something, we have to expose them tonight. I'll do it. I'll have a look around and get back to you if I discover anything. All right, but be careful, Wilbur. 
Do you think that the Archmage will win the election? Van Buren has used all her resources. They're powerful, rich friends with important posts at the Seastone Lookout. It's the only newspaper left in town. Simple slogans, simple solutions, patriotism and resentment. She tells the people what they want to hear. And yet, the Archmage will win the election. Every vote for the council leader and her cronish is a vote too many. But stupidity amongst the voters has not prevailed yet. Why doesn't the Archmage defend himself more aggressively against the council leader? Why doesn't he just tell everyone about her scheming? He wants as many people as possible to take part in solving our problems. He doesn't want there to be two sides at each other's throats. But I don't know if it will work. People are starting to accept the conditions. They blame everyone and everything, and they don't even try to change anything anymore. I asked the Archmage about it. You know what he said? He's comfortable having things stay as they are. That's why many favor it. Progress requires effort. What kind of world would it be if there was glaring injustice and everyone put up with it just because change takes too much effort? But hey, I'm just a rat. What do I know? You don't look all that happy yourself. Tough day. Tough week. I'm worried about the Archmage's safety. The situation in the town is explosive. He was heckled on the street while checking up on a field hospital down there. But it was just some wound-up idiots. I'm worried about the one assailant who has enough brains, resources, and volition. Someone? Like Headmaster Block? Hard to imagine, but it can't be ruled out. We need more information. Archmage Alistair gave me a magic slate. Hmm, that's just like him. He likes magical playthings. That's not all. The slate advised me to build a golem to help me with my work. A golem? They're very strong, so it could help me with a lot of my work. Yes, but I was thinking of something else. Think about it. We agree the Archmage is the most powerful living wizard. Of course. No one could touch a hair on his head with a magical attack. But brute force, a stone to the head, a knife in the ribs. That could be a possibility. But now imagine that he had a bodyguard, a big chap, hard as stone. Such as a, a golem, for example. Exactly. Even a troll wouldn't get past the golem. But the best thing, golems are absolutely loyal. They simply cannot help but follow their master's commands. And if I order it to defend the Archmage with its life? Then that's exactly what it'll do. And no one would get past it. That sounds fantastic. Can you manage that? Building a golem and bringing it to life? I'll sure try, at any rate. I'll get it to complete the Headmaster's stupid tasks first, and then guard the Archmage. The Headmaster and the Council Leader have come up against the wrong gnome. Then let's not waste any time. I'll build a golem bodyguard for the Archmage and have a look around the Headmaster's office. Good idea. And let me know as soon as you find anything peculiar. No heroics, Wilbur Weathervane. I'll be careful. I'll go back underground. I want to find out about the dark magic the Archmage has been sensing for days. Good luck! You and Van Buren will not succeed with your plan. You may have great and powerful friends, but the Archmage has small and cleverer ones. So true, the Archmage has smaller but cleverer friends. Alright. Um, but I think uh, Zloth was gonna help us build a golem. If we get Bill, um, uh, okay, you're not usually here. Who are you? That's that terrible boy from class. Oh, pretty late for a little guy like him. Um, young guy. Hey. Out to make fun of me, are you? You're probably upset after I proved that I know more about magic than you thought at school this morning. What? I... What are you talking about, Master Weathervane? Okay, are there like lots of clones going on here? I don't know. You look like you're training for an important battle. 
No, I'm reenacting your battle. How you and Captain Bonnet and Princess Ivo defeated the Arch Witch, Mortroga, in the Black Tower. Oh, really? It must have been the greatest battle of all time. The solitary heroes, surrounded by monsters, standing up to the leader of the Shadow Army and her son, Monkus. Yep, that's Boom, bash, totally ja! how it happened. Well, maybe it wasn't quite that dramatic. No, it wasn't. Ten years of war, the artifact of divine fate, and suddenly, peace. What's not dramatic about that? Ah, uh, true. You were pretty cheeky at school this morning. Which school? There you go again, trying to make fun of me. But Master Weathervane, I'd never... This morning in the mage school, you were trying to make me feel uncomfortable and look stupid in front of the other students. The mage school? In the upper town? I'm not even allowed there. I wasn't born in Seastone, and I'm certainly not important enough to enter the upper town without a good reason. You mean to tell me you weren't in my class this morning? In your class? To become a wizard? That would be so cool! I still believe you're trying to make fun of me, or... Do you have a twin? Not that I know of, Master Weathervane. Hey, perhaps someone was controlling my thoughts without me realising. Now I'm sure you're trying to make fun of me. No, it is possible. Not all of the sorcerers, necromancers and lawyers in the Shadow Army were captured, right? Do you know what the artifact of Divine Fate is? It can fulfil your every wish. I bet you wished for evil to be defeated. Right, Master Weathervane? Nope. We never used it. The Archmage warned us that the artifact was just too powerful. But if you can wish for anything, why not just wish for good things? Archmage Alistair doesn't believe the world works that way, and I trust him. Hmm. If that's what you think, then I think that too. It's getting late. Isn't it about time you went home? I'll wait until all the guests have left the tavern. Sometimes Zloth and Blout give me a room, if no one is renting it. You don't have a real home? I've got lots of homes. Sometimes I sleep down in the tent city, and sometimes Widow Twanky lets me sleep on the bench in front of her fire. But if I can sleep in a real bed in the pub, then of course I'd prefer that. I have a small room in the school. If you can't find a bed in the guest house, you're welcome to sleep at my place. My rabbit sheep won't be able to defend his bed in his usual manner, and I can sleep on the floor. That would be... wow! But the school's in the upper town. I'm not allowed to go there. Ah, silly rules. Hmm, maybe you'll win the lottery. Which lottery? There's a lottery tomorrow. The winner gets to live in the upper town. That will be fantastic. Maybe you'll get lucky. Everyone has an equal chance. Uh huh. I'm sure to win. And if not today, then perhaps next time. Was good to see you again or met you for the first time there's no way i would have forgotten if i'd met you before master weathervane either the boy's making fun of me or that's another item from our list of strange events yeah okay something strange is definitely going on i absolutely believe the boy when he says he's never been there so there's definitely something really weird going on like lots of i don't know clones or something just to like make him look stupid or bad um, something is definitely wrong here. Alright, but we do want to talk to Bill. That's what we want to do now, so. Psst! Bill! So, Petey, what's the password? Gold can't buy happiness. As long as it's jangling in someone else's purse. Oh, Absolutely right. So, you wanted a barrel of brandy. Right! That'll be a small bag of silver. Okay. One barrel of brandy coming up. And it's got an X on it. That's it. That's the barrel with the mark. What did you say? Oh, uh, nothing. Just thanks for the delivery. As long as you pay, I deliver. Take care. Bill didn't pay any taxes on that barrel. And those taxes build roads, care for the sick and elderly, and pay for my apple. Shield Hand won't be impressed. Actually, Shield Hand only cares about if he gets his bribes or not, but um, that's what taxes are supposed to do, and you know. 
Yeah. Sloth paid for that barrel fair and square, so it belongs to him. He should collect it before it disappears. Oh, I can't collect it for him? Okay. Ooh, toolbox. Hmm, a wooden box full of old tools. Some sort of metal clamps, a hammer, some wire. Probably Bill uses this stuff to maintain his stand. I'll eh. take the hammer. I'll just borrow. Uh, oh, I can look at the lamp. Okay. I don't know why, but I want to. It's just over a year ago when I stood in front of this gate for the first time. Mr. Shieldham wouldn't let me into the upper town to see the Archmage. I had to earn the right to an audience first by becoming a mage. Haha. <laughs> Yes, we did. I've never understood this strange separation between the upper and the lower town. The upper town is like a town within the town, with its own walls and private gates. And people from the lower town work up there, but at night they return to the lower town because they can't afford the upper town rents. My one apple a day wouldn't get me far up there either. Luckily, I can live in the school for free. Yeah, typical. Uh, yeah, elite who are don't want these so-called lower classes up in their business. Um, maybe we should talk to Sloth. No, wait, we should talk I to Shieldham. I can't enter him. the upper town. The gate's locked. Wait, what? Oh, we have to knock on the gate. I'm. Bill has delivered the marked barrel. And has therefore cheated me. Yep. Just you wait. I'm gonna get the bribe money I'm due and then some. Hey! Hello? What about my exemption? Hey, Mr. Shieldhand, we had a deal. Hmm. And now Shieldhand's busy negotiating his bribe with Bill and I'm stuck down here. Awesome. Hmm. And now if all... Hmm. If only there was some way to pay them back. Ha. <laughs> and get my pony. We are totally gonna pay them back. Hey, Zloth. The mage head. Hello, Zloth. Ah, Wilbur. Greetings. Bill delivered the barrel without paying tax on it. And that's supposed to cause him problems? Mr. Shieldhand is arresting him right now. Oh, talking to him. Oh, oh, something. Those two don't particularly like each other, but they are dependent on the same people. They wouldn't, um, blout. Bash each other? No. Bite the hand that feeds. Right. Nah. Oh, if only I was there. Then I could make sure they played by the rules. See you, love. So long. All right. Hello, Blout. Willy Bear. Are you really sure you want to vote for Van Buren? Little woman with big hair knows what's what. Has lots of gold and lots of success. And do you believe that if she's elected, you'll get the same? Sure. Promise. Uh -huh. Fine. But I think the little guy is better off with Archmage Alistair. Me, not little. And when Blout Sue, rich and powerful, little people shouldn't take away his money. So basically you just want to grow up to be a greedy hoarder? Not care about anyone else in the world? That sounds good. Before I became a mage, I worked in a Dwarven Inn in the White Ridge Mountains. You have stupid boss too. I am not stupid. Brown always have to work much more than Sloth. That's because you're so clumsy. We do the same amount of work. I might even do a little bit more. In too much work. No free time. Psst. Blout, what did you want to tell me? I won't say. You're whispering again. If we talk now, does Sloth hear us? Oh, just stop whispering behind my back, all right? Okay, sorry. Want non-alcoholic drinkers' apology? Oh, no. 
You might have tricked me with alcohol once, but never again. So Blub got you plastered? Sloth get exhausted from itchy bitchy symbol of alcohol. Sloth like little girl with pigtails. I have alcohol intolerance, or perhaps an allergy. What did you want to tell me, Blout? No, Zloth eavesdropping. I say nothing while Zloth listening. Huh, I'm not going anywhere. Okay. Bye, Blout. Bye. I wonder if we can make Sloth not listen somehow. What can I do for you? I might have some more. And okay. Um. Yum, 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 yum. So what do we do now? Good question. The houses in Seastone are pretty cramped together, and down there somewhere there's a city made of tents and boards. The Archmage is working hard to give people hope after the devastation of the war. What? Oh, he's not here anymore. Um, well, we can't do much here. Obviously, and we can't go into the upper town. Um... This looks like a hatch. Oh. Hello. Hello. Aloha. Are you talking to the enemy? Who are you? My name is... Shh. If you tell an agent of the government our real names, you'll endanger the entire organization. What do you want to call us? Hmm. My name is... John. No, Paul. Next to me is, um, J-Stop. Your name is Paul? But you're a woman. Gender is just one of the fictions indoctrinated by the patriarchal society. Oh. Really? I didn't know that. <laughs> well, at least there's not just two genders in the world, so... Uh, what are you protesting about then? We're protesting against exploitation, against discrimination, against poverty, and against the destruction of the environment. Wow, those are all important issues. What do you plan on doing? Uh, we're already doing something. We are demanding that things change. We've made a petition. And we're putting together a list of demands. We're still working on the wording. Problems with the neutrality guidelines. How far have you got? Dear brothers, stroke, sisters in arms, other forms of resistance are available. Fellow countrymen, countrywomen, country transsexuals, country gender nonconformists. Um, getting back to the whole making yes. a change thing. If you want to make a difference, you can write like on a piece of paper and pass it through the hatch then everyone will know you support our cause. Are they like Australian and Irish or something? I talked to a prisoner in the upper town. He's one of yours, isn't he? A victim of the state's power. Our first martyr. He's not dead yet. And if he got the cake, he'll be back with us soon. Cake? Shh. I love how they included transsexuals and non gender nonconformists. <laughs> like non binary gender people, that was awesome. If you're for justice and change, you'll probably be voting for Archmage Alistair, right? The election's a joke. One corrupt politician replacing another, and behind the scenes, it's always the same people pulling the strings. That may be true of the council leader, but the Archmage. Big man has got them eating out their hands. Exactly. The magic industrial multinational that was responsible for the war. So, you're entering your own candidate? 
That's pure daft. There's no point. We're doing the only thing that will lead to success. We're protesting. Maybe I can pass on some of your demands to the Archmage, and we can see what can be done. We demand that no one in Aventasia should ever be poorer than average. Isn't that mathematically impossible? Not at all. If every resident got exactly the same amount of gold, then no one is poorer than the average. Hmm. But if everyone gets the same amount of gold without having to do anything for it, why would anyone bother to earn the gold in the first place? Only someone who belongs to the rich elite could ask something like that. No. No. No, I don't think so. It's... Mm, yeah. Did you build the barricade? Aye, that's right. Do you like it? Yeah, it's beautiful. But it kind of blocks the whole street, doesn't it? We're gonna dry you lot out till you give us what we want. But the upper town is supplied by airships. We won't move an inch until you stand starving and freezing before us. But we've got plenty of food. And if my rabbit sheep didn't always take my bed, I wouldn't freeze either. I told you it doesn't work like that. We are protesting here, and there's nothing you can do about it. Okay. Everything all right in the lower town? Couldn't be better. The fire of protest is stoking up hell. People are being drawn closer together by a common noble goal. And because of a lack of space. Wished. Why did you set up the barricade here and not at the gate? That would have given you loads of extra space. And the inn would have been on our side too. Our barricade is more visible this way. The elite should quake at the sight of our resolve. I don't think they're doing that. You're clearly trying to drive a wedge between us, Agent. See? The fat cats are trying to sabotage us. They're afraid. That's a good sign. Uh, pretty sure the elite are neither seeing your barricade nor giving any sort of crap about it. I need clay to mold something. There's lots of it just outside the town. Could you please let me through? Aye. That would really suit you, wouldn't it? Yep. Uh, yes. But we're not going to let you through. Could you maybe pass me a lump of clay through the barricade then? What do we get in return? Are you doing deals with the enemy? We don't make deals with dirty capitalists. That's more like it. I don't want the clay for myself. I want to use it to support your cause. How's that? I'd like to make little balls of clay and throw them through shop windows in the upper town. Why don't you just use stones? Um, because I could carve messages and demands into the clay before firing it. Mmm, I don't know. Anonymous vandalism is tried and tested. Hmm, okay then. Truth be told, I need the clay for something else. Oh? Well, uh, I'm, uh, I'm an artist, and I could build a sculpture in the upper town depicting your heroic protest. Finally, someone who thinks for themselves. A grand statue that captures for eternity the protests of the simple people in a monumental way. That's exactly what we need. Show us the construction plans and some references. If we're satisfied, then you can produce a model. If we achieve a unanimous decision on the model at the general meeting, we'll supply you with the clay. Um, great. But first I need a little bit of clay for something else. Oh, for what? If you give me just a few handfuls of clay, I could really improve the barricade. Really? Sure. I can smear the clay between the boards from here and the sunlight would bake it hard as rock. Oh, I think that sounds pretty good. The barricade is stable enough already. The spirit of friendship built it, and the chains of suppression are holding it together. But there are holes everywhere here, which need to be sealed. Magic could seep through the little gaps, or, or gas, or something like that. Hmm, perhaps you're right. But I still don't trust you. I am one of you. This pin here should be proof enough. Hmm, 
In principle, but perhaps you took it from one of our people under duress. No, I, um, earned it, fair and square. I'm almost convinced. Show me our secret hand sign and we'll give you the clue. Um... Who? Oh! Psst! I think I saw the town guard. Better not right now. Aye. Come back when the coast is clear. <laughs> okay. Sure. Uh, well, alright, cool. That's how we get, like, clay to build our golem and stuff. Um, so, uh... Found some more people to talk to. That's cool. So uh, we'll continue in the next episode. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see ya.